Hey everyone, this is Jack with the Cardboard Herald, and we are doing the thing. Yes, this is my personal top 10 greatest games of all time. It's been a couple years since I've done one of these lists, and this month it looks like we're going to be hitting 5,000 thousand subscribers to the channel so it seemed about as good of an occasion as any to get into this personal but definitive until I rethink it next time list. So without further ado let's get into my favorite games. Coming in at number 10 is Flamme Rouge, probably my favorite race game of all time. Well, it should be my favorite race game of all time because it's the only race game appearing on this list. But I love this game for so many reasons. It's got the great modifiable puzzle aspect of building out the individual tracks. It has a couple really great expansions that don't make it necessarily more complicated, but add a lot of versatility to the game. I am a huge fan of cycling personally so the theme really speaks to me. And there's a really visceral connection between that theme and the very simple mechanics of the game. As you propel your racers forward, you have to worry about, are you going to catch slipstream? Are you going to be on uphills, downhills? With just such a simple framework, you are able to capture the, the frenetic essence of cycling. Number nine is the only appearance of one of the most notorious and beloved game publishers in the biz. That is Viticulture by Stonemaier Games. It is both the first game by Stonemaier and remains my absolute favorite. It's just such a brilliant balance between accessibility and complexity. It has this really engaging theme that is kind of universally enjoyed. You know, you're not going to offend anyone who isn't into orcs and spaceships and that kind of stuff. It has such a brilliant arc to it. The whole engine building aspect of viticulture feels so rewarding as in the beginning you have to fight to get everything put into place just to make your first bit of wine and then you still have barriers to being able to fill a lot of your orders because of lack of workers or lack of having the larger sellers or any number of reasons but once you finally get it into place and you start fulfilling those orders and everything just ramps up exponentially it feels so good. And on top of that, Tuscany Essential Edition is one of the best expansions that's out there that takes this from a mid-weight accessible type of game to something that feels incredibly rich and complex and absolutely lovely. Speaking of absolutely rich and lovely, number eight is Pax Pamir Second Edition. This is one of the most gorgeous games to ever grace a table, but it feels concise. There's nothing that's really overwrought about it. And the beauty isn't just the physical pieces. It's not just the aesthetic, but it's also the beauty of the game design. It feels so cohesive and thoughtful, like everything is part of an interwoven system that is perfectly balanced in order to make these incredibly crunchy and meaningful decisions. And it's the only game on this list that I think is just as good, if not in some situations better, as a solo game. It has layers of strategy, it rewards repeated play, and it has a depth unlike most games in this genre and with this small, concise scope. And it's just incredible. Number seven is a make good for the last time that I did one of these lists. The only game that I felt bad about omitting from my previous greatest games of all time was The Castles of Burgundy. I really struggled with that one. And in the coming years, I felt like, you know, I did Burgundy dirty. And now that there's this beautiful and new edition that has come out, and there's been a little bit further development where you have a great solo mode, some additional expansions, a team mode that's available. There's a lot more versatility and all of that is packed into that new edition, which has higher quality components. It just brings the, the presentation of the game to the elevated level that the actual gameplay 
is at. And for that reason, I have to include this game on this list. It is one of the best Euros for play at two players. It is consistently good at every player count. And it utilizes dice, a, a, a thing that in some ways is the antithesis to the whole Euro aesthetic, the, the milieu of the Euro game in a way that feels like it presents interesting options rather than defining your capabilities. I adore Castles of Burgundy. It's so good. So good. Next up is Seven Wonders Duel, a revelation of a game that I think is possibly the greatest two-player exclusive game of all time. I don't know. I'd have to check the books on that one, but... Seven Wonders Duel, to me, is an even better game than the original Seven Wonders and introduced this dual concept, the distillation of a broader game into a two-player specific system that is focused on having these multi-layered tug-of-wars going on all at once. It's concise, it's smart, it's beautiful looking, and it makes two-player drafting make sense, which few games before or since have done. Incorporating all the best elements of Seven Wonders and really playing to the strength of each of its respective designers, I think that this is a game that will stand in time immemorial as an achievement in board games. Number five is a game that no one else seems to love as much as I do, and that's Kingdom Builder. And I didn't play this as like my gateway game, which the gateway conversation is a whole other thing that we could be talking about. But, you know, I, I had played plenty of other games up until this point. I had played plenty of other Euro games. I had played Donald X's previous high accolades game, Dominion, before playing Kingdom Builder. But Kingdom Builder is just... It, it speaks to something deep within me. Not only does it have a really elegant system that could be described, uh, perhaps um, too reductively described as you just draw a card and play three houses adjacent if possible, but that is the core concept of the game. And as soon as you start realizing what the implications of adjacent if possible are, the strategic possibilities open up so broadly for you. Add on to that that you have these variable scoring conditions which have only become more interesting as more expansions have come out for the game. It is a beautiful setting that is only vaguely fantasy. It has this, this vibrance and this allure to it that makes it just such an inviting game to play. The variability is huge. It feels complex without feeling complicated. It plays well at different player counts and it just looks so good at the table. It has been and will remain one of my favorite games of all time. Now at number four, we are getting to the point where all of these games could really be arranged in any order given whatever day. I mean, really all 10 of the games that are on this list could be arranged in any way, but this is the order that I ultimately settled on based off of who I am now here. The kind of beginning half of 2021, the games that I want to play more of, the games that I derive the most joy from. So number four is Eclipse Second Dawn. Now, I've talked endlessly about the original Eclipse. It is just such an incredible game. The scope that is captured within that game is absolutely amazing. And Second Dawn doesn't actually make too many changes to that original formula. There are some modifications to it, which I think make it a better game, but probably the chief difference, which otherwise I might think is a negligible type of thing, but is so impactful in this is the presentation and organization of the components and the rules and everything that is involved in the game. 
Normally, this is an expansive game with so many things to take into consideration, and Second Dawn is still that. But by making this amazing overhaul to the organizational tools, to the tokens that you're going to use, and then adding this really lavish production for the NPC enemies that you're going to interact with, it really ties the whole thing together to make it feel more concise and cohesive than it ever has in the past. Add to that that it's just this broad 4X game with this amazing organic technological upgrade system that is so influenced by the capabilities of everyone else at the table and is just one of the most rich experiences that I've ever had in my gaming life. And it takes way less time to play than some of those other 4X space games out there. So Eclipse gets it in my book. Number three was actually the game that was at the very top of my list last time I did one of these, and that is Terraforming Mars. It is still so, 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 so good, and I love it so much, and I just want to play it all the time. It has fantastic solo mode, it has a brilliant competitive mode, and it is just endlessly rewarding. Having that engine building is so lovely. If there's any knock that I really have against Terraforming Mars as a game, well, one, it's that disco Thanksgiving aesthetic that it has for its UI on the board. And two, the expansions aren't so great. You have Prelude and the other expansions for the, the boards, the replacement Hellas and Elysium boards. And I'm all about those. And Prelude is, the dude, that, that is the, the definitive word of what an expansion should be in order to open up the possibilities in a game without strangleholding it with new systems jammed into an already complex network. But everything else I could take or leave. So I, I don't know, like that, that's just a lot of baggage that's been added to Terraforming Mars since I did my initial assessment of this and the last time I did the list. But nonetheless, it is my third favorite game of all time. I still derive so much joy from it in having the buck wild capabilities to sculpt your engine and just see this amalgamation come to its ultimate conclusion. It, it's such a rewarding game with a ton of depth and probably what I think of for the best Euro experiences that you could possibly have. Number two is the one that I probably want to have at number one, uh, but for realistic reasons, I moved it down to number two, and that is Root. This is the second Cole Worley game that's on this list, the first being PAX Premier 2nd Edition. Root captures this imaginative setting incredibly well, but gives meaning to it through having this incredibly complex and nuanced relationship by these asymmetric factions, but for all that people have talked about the asymmetry of Root and the complexity of Root, I honestly don't find it particularly complicated. I feel like I can do a good job of teaching the game. I feel like people learn well. I don't think that it's an easy game to learn by any means, but I do think that it's something that if you support players in it, that they feel encouraged and rewarded as they plumb the depths of what Root has to offer. Not only has it gotten better with time, either through the updates to the existing factions in order to give better balance to them, but also the new factions that have come out and the things that are on the horizon. From top down, it is just a gorgeous game. It looks great with Kyle Farron's amazing artwork to the integration of the different factions with one another to the ease with which you can begin to understand the, the base structure of the game and how the different factions just go bananas bending that structure. But nonetheless, that existing structure still manages to tie everything together brilliantly. It's the game that I think I most look forward to playing anytime that I get to play it. And now that the Clockwork expansion has come out to stabilize lower player count games, so two players more satisfying, and you have access to a way of playing Root in a solo mode that is way better than the original Mechanical Marquise was, I just can't help but 
escalate it to near the top of the list. And then number one, you've probably guessed it. If you've been following this channel for any amount of time, then you know my number one game of all time is Spirit Island. It is the only cooperative game, to my surprise, when I made this list, I was kind of shocked by this being the only true cooperative game on here. I bet if I did top 20, then a bunch of cooperative games would end up being in there. Spirit Island is just the, the union of theme and mechanics incarnate. Like, I've never played a game that had so much thematic resonance in everything that you do. Whenever you take an action as any spirit, you can see what the implications are from a thematic perspective, but there's also real strategic meat onto the game. It's clockworking, it's vast, it has tons of components, yet it all makes sense in this intricate puzzle that works together. It scales beautifully from low to high player counts and in spite of coming out with so many different spirits I am still just continually amazed at the unique pairings and the the amazing things that can happen when you're playing in concert with one another it works great as a single spirit solo game scales beautifully all the way up to well I, I prefer it three players or less honestly but <laughs> it's amazing uh, it's a game that I have played nearly 50 times at this point, and I just want to play it more. I do not get tired of it. I think the theme is absolutely wonderful and so subversive for the <laughs> status of the game industry. And it's also incredibly strategic and tactical and rewarding to play. I can't say enough good things about it. Spirit Island is my favorite game of all time. And that is going to do it for our list. Thank you so much for watching. If you are one of the 5,000 subscribers to the Cardboard Herald, or if you're just watching this because it happened to come up because of algorithms or whatever, then thank you. Whatever you've done, you've helped support this amazing adventure so far, and I'm looking forward to making great content for you in the future. If you like what you saw out of this video, then maybe you'll want to stick around next week because... I'm going to be doing a video of the top 10 games of all time that I just did and everything that sucks about them. So I hope you enjoy watching that. I've enjoyed doing this. Thank you so much for watching the Cardboard Herald. Got the trash truck outside. I'm gonna give that a second. The iTrash truck.